Welcome to Constellations, the podcast from Kratos, where leaders discuss what's coming next in satellites and space. Welcome to Constellations, the podcast from Kratos. My name is John Gilroy, and I'll be your moderator today. Our guest today is Kambiz Aguili, CEO of Blue Sky Network. Kambiz, how are you? Good morning. How are you, John? Thanks. A lot of, a lot of action here for 2018, isn't it? Satellite 2018, a lot of people here, a lot of buzz. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. We, we had a few meetings already this morning. It, it was great. It was yeah. great. I was up there, six, 700 people up there listening. Some six people talk about satellites and satellite technologies, and that's why we have you here, because you've got some innovation here that we want to talk about for our listening audience. Um, I want to focus on asset tracking. You know, it's been around for a good while, but with the emergence of IoT, the Internet of Things, it's magnified its importance to supply chain management. Is that a fair fair statement there? That that is a fair statement, John. I I would like to first express my gratitude to Kratos and you, John, for inviting me and Blue Sky Network for this discussion. Uh, We believe that real-time asset tracking monitoring is not only magnified by business use cases such as as on IET, as you indicated, but also by mission critical as safety use cases. You'll look at, I'm just going to maybe start with a few examples. You'll look at Malaysia Airlines uh, 370 disappeared in 2014 uh, on route to Beijing. It was never found. It cost over $150 million for Mm -hmm. the search, and uh, 227 passengers died. You look at Air France uh, 447 crashed in 2009. The black box was not recovered until two years after that. You look at um, other use cases beyond aviation. I'm looking maybe like land, mobile space. You look at two UN journalists were kidnapped on March 2017 and beheaded while investigating a violation of UN crimes in Congo. 15 UN peacekeepers were the same. Um, they were uh, on a peacekeeping mission in Congo that were killed. Uh, you look at maritime applications in you know, just one of the major countries we work with in Southeast Asia. On average, they'll lose $300 million to illegal fishing every year. So at Blue Sky Network, we are surgically focused on mission critical logistics and how we can help our clients with three key objectives. Um, you know, one is to increase the safety of their operations, two, to bring more revenue to their organizations and how they manage their fleet, and three, to help optimize the cost components of their business. Um, you know, our, our value to either military, government, commercial clients can vary uniquely and greatly across. We help our clients with real-time geospatial monitoring being not just on the IoT, but also on situational awareness, surveillance, battle management, or with commercial clients on how they utilize their assets better, the safety mandates, and search and rescue coordinations. You know, I, I looked around the show here. There must be other similar companies to yours. And when you go around the show, you meet people and talk to people, and they go, well, well hey, Combies, I mean, what's your differentiator? I mean, you have a Ph.D., you got an MBA, you got lots of great experience, but why is your company different? I think I think the most important element of our business is our clients and the unique use cases that we get to work on and help our clients with every day. Uh, we take a great pride in our in a military, government, commercial clients in over 50 countries. We have a wealth of unique use cases in business, security, safety, for social awareness, surveillance, and IoT. We have a full solution offering multimodal operations, air, land, and 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 maritime. Uh, we have FAA-approved products that we also apply them to land and maritime uh, solutions in place. We have an end-to-end ecosystem of hardware, software, analytics, and real-time SATCOM. We, we provide on-site product demonstrations for our, for our clients or clients-to-be. And I think something we also get, you know, take a great pride in, we are made in the U.S., yeah. Uh, we build all our products in the USA. We, we build our software in the USA. We offer all our software here from the U.S., and, and we, we think that's the great thing. Well, we are here in Washington, D.C. I teach at a school just up the road called Georgetown. And uh, in my class, they talk about the Pareto Principle, 80-20, 80-20. And you see it in so many things. You see it in car racing. You see it in soccer. You see it in football, baseball, everything. And we see it in asset efficiency practices, too. I see it right here, you know. Yeah. A recent study, I was doing some research this morning. A recent study shows that 85% of manufacturing companies globally are aware of asset efficiency, but only 15% of the surveyed firms have implemented it at a systematic level. That's the old 80-20, isn't it? Do you see that implementation growing or flat or where do you see it? Absolutely. Absolutely. You're, 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 you're on point in that. I mean, in one of the industries, as an example, as we're working with, the average asset utilization is only around 30%. And if they get around 50%, they're actually super happy. They're bragging. Uh, they're, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, that, that, and that, that's, that's not good. I think 
One is we can clearly draw the business case of why and, and show how a business can really use real-time tracking of operational and safety metrics, including their fleet assets. The implementation would not actually see the fuel to grow. So we are in a business, we are in a place as we do today to help companies raise their asset utilizations and save them either make more money or save on costs on a day-to-day. And we are in a, uh, in an upward uh, bit of pace of that trajectory today. So let's say we could just uh, snap our fingers and show up at a customer's site, one of your customers. Give us a profile of your typical customer. You know, as, as I indicated before, we have clients in over 50 countries. They You've been in business customer. 15 years, lots of places. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So say the clients could range from you know military operators and militaries worldwide, Air Force operators. They could, you know, oil and gas companies. These are search and rescue operations. These are regional airlines, charter airlines. Um, uh, they vary greatly based on what they do. We have, you know, the United Nations operators. Um, and and uh, so they vary greatly. So I think we categorize them based on military operators, government operators, um, as well as commercial operators. We also and you know span across the aviation for a very, very good part, as well as maritime and land and mobile worldwide. And each of them have very, very unique use cases that I'll be happy to touch on, but... Um, and, and how they impact yeah. you know, the, you know, you know, Combis, the, what they do. I never really understood the importance of a lot of this asset until you know, a few months ago when my daughter moved to rural Ethiopia. <laughs> oh, wow. All of a sudden, I'm getting out. I'm looking at Africa, looking at maps, looking at that, looking at all kinds of different things. And, and so this is just a small slice of my world, but for many companies, that's their whole world is tracking their assets all over, whether it's in airplanes, whether it's boats or ships. I mean, it, it's a very complicated puzzle. It is. It is. You're absolutely right. Well, we're going to go from um, the Pareto principle to the cloud. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and so uh, Blue Sky is a cloud-based solution. And just maybe for our listeners, explain the difference between a cloud-based solution and an on-premises asset tracking system. Um, absolutely. So we actually offer two classes of solutions, both a cloud-based with a 99.99% uh, uptime and, and you know, on-premise solution as well, which is a full, has a full end-to-end encryption, authentication algorithms, and etc. And you know, the latter, which is the on-premise solution, also um, has been a primary interest of our foreign military clients and government operators worldwide and who are in need of very advanced security requirements. So we offer actually both solutions. Both I was in a data center uh, last week. You know, cloud solution can be very, very secure. I think some cloud solutions are more secure than, you know, the server down the hall. I was at this data center, and there were seven layers of security in this data center. I thought I was going into, like, a federal penitentiary. It, you had to show IDs and eye scans and, and multiple th- authentication. I mean, the cloud can be, I don't know, I've seen situations where I think I'd trust the cloud more than on-prem for security. No, you, you're absolutely right. I mean, we, we, we host our data on the cloud-based, on the SOC 1, SOC 2 compliant uh, data centers. That being said, some of our military and government clients, of for course, for their yeah. security reasons, they have to keep things in, a, in their you know in the firewall and yeah. the periphery and the, in the perimeter of their operations. And we, we understand, we appreciate that too. Yeah, Georgetown has a big event on supply chain, and uh, it's coming up in about a month. So, how does asset tracking impact a company's mm. supply chain and logistics operations? Absolutely. Let me, let me give you an example of how, how one can save money. Uh, you, you look at a Blackhawk, a Blackhawk can cost around $50,000 an hour to operate. As an example, taxing can be you know, taking anywhere from a few minutes to up to 10 minutes uh, on each such flight mission, which costs you know, very expensive fuel, flight time, pilot time, and etc. cetera. Um, you know, automatic analysis of flight times and taxing across the fleet guides our operators to identify anomalies and help save minutes of idle time on runway. So just, just to give an example again on that, saving just two minutes of taxing time can translate to $500 per flight, which you know, over even a minimum 10 trips per month can lead to $5,000 of savings per month per fleet. And it will cost them only $100 to earn that $5,000 per month. And that's an investment they won't take on a book. And this is just for a helicopter. If you look like at major jets like 747s, these checks can be 3 and $4 million when they're not online and not being used. Very, very expensive if you don't manage your assets correctly. So... Um, from your perspective, what are the leading industries that are adopting asset tracking solutions? Uh, you know, some of the industries that we have a great footprint in and have helped improve their operations include wildfire containment, search and rescue, uh, battle and illegal fishing, mission critical air charter, cargo operations, 
oil and gas, battle management coordination, military. Tra- okay, what haven't you? <laughs> what companies haven't you had? Just the, across the board, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's amazing. That's why we are really humbled by the opportunities that we given every day to work with very very unique use cases. But in summer, it's all across the air land and seeing everything in between. Yeah. So when you go to the store, they get the little barcode thing out and they yeah. check out, you know, and and maybe in some warehouses they have uh, RFID tagging. Uh, and so, so what's the difference between GPS tracking versus, you know, barcode and RFID tracking? Sure. Uh, you know, an RFID or barcode solution can also possess a GPS chip, by the way. Ah. So I think the challenge is the availability of a link uh, to communicate the gather data, including the position to the operations center or other mobile units in the M2M. So cellular networks can be one option to accomplish that, to be the channel of communication data to the rest of the fleet or the rest of the ecosystem. However, and despite the general belief, people think that we are all connected all around the world, which we are not, you know, as reported by Rockwell Collins in 2015, more than 75% of Earth's surface lacks ground-based radar and connectivity. For instance, you look at Croatia has more than 1,000 islands. You look at Indonesia comprises over 17,000 islands with no infrastructure in place. Wow. So, and, and when you're traveling over the water, say outside of the U.S., there are no ground stations to fully connect you to your assets in real time in a continuous two-way data and voice link with low latency. Uh, the satellite communication link is the only mean of offering true and real-time connectivity of assets for which we've been working with and working on for the past 17 years. It's like the mortar with the bricks. You get the bricks out there, but the mortar is provided yep, by the yep, satellite. Yep, yeah. yep. So um, in a GPS tracking solution, can radio frequency interference, RFI, affect <clears throat> tracking accuracy? Yeah, I mean, the, the answer is yes and no, and I'll tell you why that's not an issue for us. And that's exactly why we've gone through the extra mile with FAA-approved products. So to ensure that none of our clients face any interference, we bring these key quality approvals such as airworthiness and SDC, not only to our aviation clients, but also to our maritime land mobile clients within the same family. To give you an example, and in principle, anything that operates close to 1616 to 1626 or 1560 and 1606 megahertz will interfere, for instance, with Iridium GPS and GNSS. Mm-hmm. Um, that being, and Iridium can work you know, for instance, uh, in, in, that, in that range, um, not recommend to improve in that range either. Uh, however, we have not seen any evidence or interference to this debate, but moreover, our products having additionally been tested and passed the DO-160, uh, Section 21, Category M, Tidal emissions of radio frequency of energy, um, you know, give us a great confidence that have never been causing such interference. With respect to accuracy, as you mentioned, you know, our positioning systems are quite accurate. We have accuracy horizontally up to 3.5 meters and vertically to 5 meters, and with an operational limit of 65 feet, uh, 60, 60, 60,000 feet altitude and 1,000 knots in the speed. So That's we are great. pretty, pretty robust. Mm. Well, Cumbies, we are in Washington, D.C. at the Washington Convention Center. You go out the door, a few blocks up is Capitol Hill. They make a lot of laws there. (laughs) Some people like the laws, some people don't like the laws. Usually there's legal issues involved in GPS tracking. And uh, you got privacy, you've got, okay, what data do you have, how long do you keep it, and you've got what liability people have. Um, so address some of these issues for our listeners. The whole whole lawyer up on Capitol Hill issue that we don't want to talk about, but we have to. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think we implement one of the most secure on-premise solutions in the industry for our military clients worldwide in need of a private service solutions, for instance. You know, within their firewalls, along with three levels of encoding and encryption with strict authentication access protocols. You know, our clients' uh, geospatial and operational data points are indefinitely archived. Uh, they're backed up and restored for their needs at any time, uh, either for operational aud- audits, you know, chain of custody analysis, or to help support their missions. So this, 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 we, we take that to the heart and, and making sure that's never a problem. Earlier, you, when you are talking about uh, GPS, you kind of tossed out real fast M2M. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and there's a lot of people understand M2M, machine to machine. Some people don't. But M2M is going to be a big, big part of our future, whether we like it or not. We, we, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on out there, all kinds of IoT. And so what role does M2M technology play in uh, asset uh, tracking, satellite asset tracking? Sure. Machine to machine, M2M allows the real-time connection of all the assets to each other without the need for a ground-based line-of-sight technology. We use Iridium's low-orbit satellite network with 100% global coverage to accomplish an M2M mesh network of assets connected to each other and the operations center at a very minimal uh, you know, financial and physical footprint for, for the operators. Yeah. I went to your LinkedIn profile, your company LinkedIn profile, and a lot of interesting hashtags there. I mean, you cover a pretty broad <laughs> spectrum. Hashtag satellite tracking, hashtag military, hashtag satcom, hashtag automated and aircraft. Wow. I mean, do you sleep? I mean, you're in so many different areas geographically. It must be, it must be a different business to run. 
Oh, it's amazing business. I mean, we we have clients in fifty countries. We are we have presence across aviation, tremendous um, but in a footprint across aviation, maritime, land, mobile, being government, military, or commercial operators worldwide. It definitely keeps out of, keeps us at night, but it gets us very excited to do what we do every day. Hmm. What about this uh, this phrase I see called geo fencing? What exactly does that mean? Geofencing uh, is, is a term used for grouping across a mission. So you define circles or areas of, of importance. Let's give, let me give you an example. If a fire is happening somewhere in California, Montecito, you define that region, you draw that region dynamically on our map, and you, uh, you, you basically monitor the assets between helicopters that are attending or fixed wing or attending to, to the incident in and out of the periphery. So you manage that area, you manage that mission, you manage that project, you manage alerts and everything you get in and out of it uh, autonomously in real time without having to you know keep track of all the hundreds of assets that are um, helping with that mission i always try to maybe condense things and boil things down i'm a i'm a chef at home i like cooking so i'm trying to come up with four words would it be something like um sitting next to you in the airport and uh, so what you folks do is you do mission critical fleet management i mean that that summarizes a lot of these different hashtags doesn't it that it does it does you're you're absolutely right Good, good. Mission Critical Fleet Management. Well, Combees, we're running out of time here. This is the crystal ball portion of the interview here where you have to predict, <laughs> I love saying this, with 100% accuracy exactly what's going to happen in the world of satellite technology. Can you imagine that? Can anyone do that? Well, you can take a stab at it. Well, what do you see the future of this whole business come four or five I, I, years down the road? You're, oh, wow. that's, that's an amazing question. I, that's an amazing question. We have a wonderful five or ten years of emerging use cases I've had ahead of us, I think, with machine learning and big data to truly help extractive value of geospatial monitoring. I think we are working with numerous clients that, that you know, keeps us, you know, thinking in our feet. Uh, we're working for a specific client, for instance, that on average has lost over $300 million to illegal fishing annually. Um, you know, the International Civil Aviation Organization, IKO, is guiding the mandate to help avoid another you know, MH370 uh, type disaster taking place where an asset is always connected autonomously. We are surgically focused on our client use cases to unravel the next phase of competitive and financial advantage through real-time monitoring of their assets for safety and operational efficiency. And, and we are committed to that. What I'm going to do now after this interview, I'm going to roam around the show and try to meet people. So if I take you with me, who would you like to meet the show here? A lot of important people in this it's, it's actually It's actually amazing. So I think it, um, uh, there are a ton of smart people. Uh, I think it's a great show. You're included in that of, list. <laughs> uh, well, oh, thank you. But, but uh, I think a ton of smart people here, very senior people. We are thrilled to be here. Yeah. Uh, my business partner are attending the attending show. Yeah. We're really excited. Yeah. And we have two talks coming up on th- Wednesday and Thursday. One is on IKO, one is machine learning. Oh, so wow. I invite machine learning, yeah, yeah. I invite ML. people to. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah it's, it's, it's a wonderful topic. So I invite people to come and enjoy, enjoy the talk. And I think it will be it would be great. I think next year, if we can grab you for this again, we'll have to get a little like a dictionary. M to M, M, L, A, I. I mean, all these acronyms are changing and so and they have different applications. And, and what exactly is uh, the implication of artificial intelligence with managing assets? I mean, this is an application, and you, with a PhD in computer science, should be right on top of this. Yeah, I appreciate that. We, we definitely are. Thanks for that. We're great. Kambiz, unfortunately, we are running out of time. I'd like to thank our guest, Kambiz Aguili, CEO, Blue Sky Network. Thanks for listening to Constellations, the podcast from Kratos. If you like this interview, please subscribe, tell a friend, and give us a review.